First off, my apologies for not getting this Week 7 recap out earlier, but it's been a hellish type of long-ass week with a lot of other conflicts here, so I'm kind of playing catch-up mode. But the reality is, is maybe this week deserves to be quickly swept under the rug because most of these games we saw in Week 7 of the NFL season were boring as hell. Lots of big blowouts, lopsided, one-sided games. I mean, for Christ's sake, she got 27 to 3, 54 to 13, 41 to 17, 31 to 5, 38 to 3. Like, come on. Yeah, not every week's going to be a winner, but this week was certainly full of losers. And unfortunately, those losers in a lot of cases were the fans that had to watch a lot of these games because they were booty, brutal, and bad. The three Bs, bitches. And that's four Bs. You get the point. All right, anyways, let's hurry up and put a bow on this. Let's talk about week seven of the 2021 NFL season. The Thursday night matchup, there was no Baker Mayfield, but no problem for the Cleveland Browns. Case Keenum was serviceable. The big star of the day was Dernis Johnson. Broke through in his spotlight shining moment. Got 146 yards on the ground and a touchdown, which was enough to help the Browns beat the Broncos 17 to 14. Shifting over to the Sunday action, he had the Washington football team squander several potential scoring chances in the second half. Allowed the Packers to win relatively comfortably 24-10. to Patrick Mahomes stunk, and then he got knocked the fuck out. And then the Titans proceeded to knock the Chiefs the fuck out. They chopped the hell out of Kansas City 27-3. to Uh-oh, danger, danger, warning, warning, trouble ahead for the Kansas City Chiefs. Young Ho Koo's 36-yard field goal towards the end of the game gave the Falcons the edge and helped them beat the Miami Dolphins 30-28. to Interesting thought. Dolphins are 1-6. Tua's back. He's actually been okay the past couple of games. So let's introduce the distraction of Sean Watson, and I'm sure that will go swimmingly well. <laughs> and I gotta say, if I was Zach Wilson, I'd get hurt too. Yeah, I'd get the fuck out of there. I'd be faking a knee injury at that point. Uh, <laughs> the Patriots destroyed, obliterated the Jets 54-13. to Oh, God, that was pain. Sorry, Jets fan. Same year, different year, same old sorry-ass Jets. Uh, and speaking of sorry-ass former Jets, so much for that Sam Darnold shit for the Panthers, huh? Woo! Listen, a half season in, you're questioning whether or not he's even going to be the starter in Week 8. The Giants and Danny Dimes of all teams put a hurting on the Panthers on Sunday, 25-3. to In arguably the most impressive performance of the Week 7, the Cincinnati Bengals rolled off 28 unanswered points in the second half, and they roll away comfortably from the Baltimore Ravens 41-17. to Chalk that up into the category that nobody probably saw that coming. Maybe some thought that the Bengals could win that game, but by 24 points? I don't know about all that, but I know I've said some things about the Bengals lost to the Bears, so you shouldn't take them seriously. They also just kicked the shit out of the Ravens, so it is time to take them a little seriously, because right now, if the season ended, they would have home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. Maybe an indication of the AFC being pretty weak this year. The Raiders are back on a roll with all the John Gruden crap. They've won their last two games. They beat the Eagles relatively comfortably, 33-22. to uh, Give it to Dan Campbell. Damn it, he tried. But Matthew Stafford got his revenge against his former team. The Rams beat the Lions 28-19. to Lions, you're going to win one at some point. It's got to be coming soon. The Arizona Cardinals didn't have much trouble. They've easily moved to 7-0, and even though they're going to be appears without J.J. Watt for the rest of the season. They easily dispatched the Houston Texans 31-5. to Apparently, Matt Nagy wasn't the only one with COVID on Sunday, huh? That's an interesting way to ensure you don't get fired. Oh, who am I kidding? He wouldn't have gotten fired even if he didn't have COVID. It sure looked like the Bears' offense and defense had COVID on Sunday. The Buccaneers kicked that shit in. <laughs> they, beat, they beat the Bears. They embarrassed the Bears 38-3. to The Indianapolis Colts got through the Santa Clara storm just fine, it looks like. Had enough, uh, put away the 49ers late, they go on to win 30-18, to and all of a sudden here come the Indianapolis Colts back into the mix in the AFC, and specifically in the AFC South. And then the Monday night matchup was a bit of a snoozer, which was a perfect cap on this snooze fest of a week. Brian Johnson hit a 33-yard field goal with just about two minutes remaining, which was enough to put the Saints over the Seahawks 13-10, to and yeah, that's, that's about what we had this week. It was kind of a rough one. In terms of winners and losers from week number seven, I'll start off with the winners, the Tennessee Titans. Not only did they beat the Chiefs, they destroyed the Chiefs. So if you're the Titans and you're saying, hey, you know, we want to be taken seriously too. We know our division's trash, and maybe you don't fully respect us, 
Well, this is a team that has now beat the Bills and beat the Chiefs. It is time to pay some attention to the Tennessee Titans. They've earned it. They deserved it. What more can you say? Same thing with the Cincinnati Bengals. Mad props to them. Holy crap. They lost to the Bears. Like, we cannot underestimate, like, the Bears suck. They are much worse than the 3-4 and four record indicates. They are trash. And the Bengals looked even more like trash against them. How bad is that? But yet, here are the Bengals now all of a sudden kicking the shit out of the Baltimore Ravens in a spot where if the season ended, they would, as I mentioned a moment ago, be the number one seed in the AFC. That is insane. They deserve a lot of credit. Zach Taylor, a guy a few weeks ago that I thought was goners, might damn end up being coach of the year. How crazy is that? And then the Indianapolis Colts. Like, anticipated a little bit of a rougher start to the season with how tough their beginning schedule was, but here they come. Now you get a road victory over San Francisco. Not a great team or anything, but still, it's a tough spot to be in, and they're starting to come around. That was an important win for them to get on Monday night, and they got it done. In terms of some of the notable losers for Week 7, start off with the Kansas City Chiefs. They needed this game against the Titans really, really badly, and they didn't get it. Mahomes got knocked out, so now you're talking about a Chiefs team, two-time defending AFC champions. They're 3-4. and four. Mahomes is hurt. Yikesies, yikesies. Will this team even make the playoffs? Like, we can only rest on the arrogance of the Reed Mahomes magic, but for so long before you look at the reality on the ground and say, you yeah, know, this team's not that good. And right now, they're not that good, and they're certainly not playing that well at all. And then the Miami Dolphins, like, what a disaster. One in six. One in six. If Chris Greer and Brian Flores' seats aren't incredibly hot right now, I don't know why. They should be. Because last year, they didn't allow Tua to finish out games because they just had to go to Fitzpatrick, still miss the playoffs. So you sacrifice the long-term potentially for the short-term gain, and there was no short-term gain. And now you look at the long-term, like Tua comes back, from the injury, has a couple of games where he looks okay. I won't say he looks spectacular, but he certainly didn't look like a scrub, and yet you're still finding ways to lose. You can't blame Dua for the defense. You know what I mean? Like, that's pathetic. This is a Dolphins team that a lot of people were looking at probably at least to be a double-digit win team. I certainly was, and they're going to have to go on a massive winning streak to even have that be a potential possibility. Yeah, like heads to roll in Miami right now with this organization. What a dumpster fire. And speaking of dumpster fires, it's that time of the week to kick on Matt Nagy. I'm sure the collaboration was fantastic. The belief in the team is great. And you lost 38-3. to Just horrendous on so many different levels. Hey, I'm going to take a four-string offensive lineman that's never played right tackle and let me put him out there without any help. Just, I could go on and on and on. The fact that this guy still has a job is astounding to me. Because this should have long since been rectified. In terms of game balls I want to give out for Week 7, I go to the quarterbacks and I'll say Joe Burrow, 23-38 of 38 for 416 yards and three touchdowns. Big game. I know early in the year, especially in that Bears game, I was calling Joe Burrow mid, and I want to be clear, he absolutely looked mid, and mid was being generous. But now you're starting to see some of the good of Joe Burrow, when he's good, how good he can be. And the Bengals are reaping major benefits from that. They absolutely are. He was a star on Sunday. In terms of running backs, Dernis Johnson, 146 yards and a touchdown, filling in for that injured Cleveland backfield, and he had his moment. Like, it might be always known as the Dernis Johnson game. Like, that's the type of impact that he had. Jamar Chase, I mean, what more can you say? His numbers, it's crazy to think about it, but his numbers right now are better than Justin Jefferson's rookie numbers last year. Like, that's how fantastic Jamar Chase has been. So much for the concerns about the drops in the preseason, huh? Eight catches of 201 yards and a touchdown like Jamar Chase is looking every bit like what you would expect to get out of a receiver you took in the top five. Getting that Julio Jones type of impact and saying, hey, you know what? Fuck a Panay Sewell. Like, you take the explosive perimeter option every time. The Bengals look pretty good for that decision now. In terms of defensive units, I'll go to the Buccaneers. They only allowed three points. Forced five turnovers from Justin Fields. They were in his face all day. Got four sacks and a lot of other pressure. I that game... I've seen a lot of shitty games of the Bears over the years, don't get me wrong. That's not the worst performance I've ever seen them have, but it's in the top ten. Might be top five. It was really, really bad. And the Buccaneers' defense certainly played a major role in that. And then in terms of coaches, i got to give props to Dan Campbell. I know his Lions are now 0-7, but 
It's not for lack of trying. We all know that roster stinks. We all know that team is not good. But like I said, mock Dan Campbell and the Lions while you can, because eventually they're going to get it right. And when they do, watch out. Coming into this game against the Rams, he decided, hey, we're going to sit there after we score the opening touchdown, onside kick. Then when we get stopped, fourth down, fake punt. Like he tried to win. He wasn't afraid. So many coaches would play it close to the fence, try to keep it close. Not Dan Campbell. He tried to say, fuck it. I got to go for it. We're already 0-6. What the hell do we have to lose? And that's why players want to play for a coach like that. And eventually when you get the better players in there, it will make a big difference. I promise you that. But he deserves props for that because a lot of other coaches we know of would have just tried to play it close to the vest, keep the ball away from the Rams. And the reality is, like, the spread on that game, I think, was like 16 and a half points. They lost by nine. They were almost 50% below the spread. Like, that's a reflection of going after it. Like, go after it. What the hell do you have to lose? In terms of the two-minute drill this week, I was going to initially talk about, you know, the boring play that we saw in week seven. But I wanted to pick a team to shit on, so I'm going to pick on the Carolina Panthers. You started off 3-0, and and now look where the fuck you are. After seven weeks, you're questioning whether or not Sam Darnold should even be your starting quarterback. It's almost like devoting an, your entire 2020 draft class to the defensive side of the ball and then turning around and spending your first round pick in 2021 on yet another defensive player was a really dumb dick strategy in a league where the offense matters more and more and more. In particular, it feels particularly astoundingly stupid and ridiculous when you consider the fact that where they were drafting, they could have at least drafted Mac Jones. They could have maybe drafted Justin Fields, and maybe Justin Fields in that scenario would look better than he does currently in Chicago. But they decided to go the veteran retread route, which was fucking stupid. We have to call that out as we see it. Teams that are going to be the most consistently in the, most consistent in the league and in the best position to succeed are going to be the teams that draft and develop their own quarterbacks. There are certainly going to be outliers to that. There are certainly going to be exceptions to the rule, but by and large in general, look at the Arizona Cardinals, 7-0, and Kyler Murray in year three. Look at the Bengals, top of the AFC, Joe Burrow, year two. Chargers in the mix, Justin Herbert, year two. You know, there's a tremendous amount of value there about finding that young quarterback on that rookie deal and building around him. The Carolina Panthers went in a different direction, which was especially stunning considering that Matt Rule had like the seven-year contract. That's a perfect time to totally rebuild and start with a quarterback, and they have yet to do so. And then when you bring in the Sam Darnold, you don't do enough to help him on the offset side of the ball. It's just one mistake compounding another, compounding another, compounding a day another. So the Carolina Panthers deserve a lot of shit right now. Because the way they went about roster building, in my opinion, was dated and dumb dick as hell.